bust. How about Anthony Bennett, the number one overall pick of the Cleveland Cavaliers? He don't have no confidence in himself. You can, you can look at him and see he don't have confidence in the way he's shooting the ball. The New York Knicks select Kevin Knox from the University of Kentucky. For Marvin Bagley, perhaps the biggest bust we have seen in recent NBA history. Bender has been unable to adjust. Bender has been a non-factor for his entire career. <laughs> So hope you guys like that little intro and I'm excited to go into this video and talk about every team's worst draft pick since 2010. Like always, I would love to hear your thoughts on my selection for your favorite team. Just let me know in the comments. Also, this video is brought to you by Underdog Fantasy. You can scan the QR code on your screen right now to get a 100% deposit match up to $100. More on them later. Let's get into this. All right, so we're going to start things off with the Minnesota Timberwolves who had the second overall pick in the 2011 draft. This draft had many future Hall of Famers, including Kyrie Irving, Klay Thompson, Kawhi by Leonard and Jimmy Butler, but number two overall, Minnesota decided to go with Derek Williams, the forward out of Arizona. Williams only played two and a half seasons in Minnesota, 155 games where he averaged 10 points, five rebounds, and shot 42% from the field and 29% from three. Minnesota was not a great drafting team before they ended up with Carl Anthony Towns in 2015. They definitely whiffed on this pick in 2011, and even a year before in 2010, they ended up taking Wesley Johnson, a forward out of Syracuse. Number four overall in the pick right after him ended up being DeMarcus Cousins. Comparing them to other teams in the NBA, the Nuggets weren't too bad since 2010 drafting-wise. They didn't really have too many misses, but there's definitely an obvious worst pick for them, and it's a Emmanuel Moutier, who they took seventh overall in the 2015 draft. I loved Emmanuel Moutier coming out of the Republic of Congo. I really wanted my Knicks to take him fourth overall. Thankfully, they ended up going with Chris Porzingis. Well, Moutier only played two and a half years in Denver before getting traded to the Knicks in 2017. He averaged 11 points, four assists, and three rebounds for the Nuggets, shooting 37% from the field, 32% from three, and 73% from the line. His defense had some inconsistencies, and he was never really that efficient from the field. I really thought Emmanuel Moutier could have been a franchise point guard when he was selected in 2015. Kind of have an under-the-radar one for the Portland Trailblazers. They ended up trading pick 15 and 20 in the 2017 draft. Those picks ended up being Justin Jackson and Harry Giles to the Kings, so you're like, all right, that's not too bad. Well, they traded those two picks to go up to number 10 to select Zach Collins, the big man out of Gonzaga. Collins played three years in Portland, averaging eight points, five rebounds, and two assists a night. He shot 47% from the field, 32% from three, and 75% from the line. He definitely had some injuries to his career. He had a major ankle injury basically in that 2020 season. He only started 12 games for the Trailblazers, one in his rookie year, zero in his sophomore year, and then he started the first 11 games of his 2020 season, and those were the only 11 games he played in. And it does hurt where four picks late Later, another center went off the board out of Kentucky, and his name was Bam Adebayo. So there is a timeline where we could have seen Damian Lillard and CJ McCollum still be the Portland Trailblazers backcourt in 2024 with Bam as their starting five. For the Utah Jazz, they selected a player in the 2014 draft that had tons of potential, and he really didn't become a bust because of his skill. It's really just because of injuries, and that's going to be Dante Exum, who they took fifth overall in the 2014 draft. The 2014 draft had some hits and had some misses. I mean, it went Wiggins number one, Jabari Parker two, Joel and at three, Aaron Gordon four, and then Exum five, one pick ahead of Marcus Smart, two picks ahead of Joyce Randall. And Exum was drafted to be a nice combo guard that was going to be an absolute sharpshooter from downtown. He averaged 4.8 points as a rookie, shooting 34% from the field. Then he had a major injury, missed all of his sophomore year, and then just had multiple injuries basically for the next three seasons in Utah. He played four and a half years total for the Jazz, ended up playing in Spain and Serbia in the 22 and 23 seasons. Now has completely turned his career around as what we thought he would be when he came into the 2014 draft, just as this elite knockdown shooter that could be a nice complimentary piece. And that's what he's been for the Dallas Mavericks this year since he's shooting 47% from three. It just did not work out for the Utah Jazz. The Oklahoma City Thunder were either really good since 2010 or hit on all their first round picks, but a player that didn't work out and credit to them, he was the 21st overall pick. So it's not like it was a huge miss, but he was definitely their worst draft pick. It's gotta be Terrence Ferguson. Ferguson had interest to play at Oklahoma, Baylor and Kansas, and even decommitted from Arizona as well to go play in the National Basketball League for an Australian team, the 36ers. And yeah, Ferguson didn't do anything at OKC. He played three years for them in 191 games. He averaged 4.0. 
1.8 points, 1.4 rebounds, and 0.7 assists. He shot 40% from the field and 33% from three. And what just makes this look like a really bad pick is because he was selected 21st in the 2017 draft. Pick number 22 was Jared Allen out of Texas, and pick 23 was OG Ananobi out of Indiana. So Sam Presti did not hit on this Ferguson pick. The Knicks honestly hit on a lot of late first rounders since 2010. Guys like Yvonne Schumpert, Emmanuel Quickly, Tim Hardaway Jr., Quinn and Grimes. But there was two top 10 picks that they did not hit on. So I could have talked about Frank Neal Aquino, who did go eighth overall in the 2017 draft, but I'm going to talk about Kevin Knox, who went ninth overall in the 2018 draft. I mean, Knox was drafted in such a poor situation because the Knicks were basically tanking for Zion Williamson and had one of the worst rosters in franchise history in his rookie year, where he averaged 12.8 points and four and a half rebounds, but he shot 37% from the field and 34% from three. It really wasn't until the 2022 season where he started becoming more efficient, a plus 40% field goal shooter and a plus 34% three point shooter. In his four years in New York, he averaged eight points and three rebounds, shot 36% from the field and 34% from three. It really wasn't great. He was a summer league legend though, but also what just makes it look a little bit worse is because Mikel Bridges was the pick right after him. Two picks later was Shea Gilgis Alexander and three picks later was Miles Bridges. So the Knicks definitely dropped the ball on this Kevin Knox pick in 2018. Luckily, they were able to get Mitchell Robinson in the second round in that draft. The Brooklyn Nets were also a really tough team to do just because that they didn't even have most of their first round picks since 2010. Obviously, from the Kevin Garnett, Paul Pierce trade, they hit on Derek Favors third overall in the 2010 draft, I would say. So I'm just going to go with Jazen Musa, who ended up being the 29th overall pick in the 2018 draft. He only played 49 games in the NBA for Brooklyn, averaging 2.1 points in nine games in his rookie season. He played in 40 games in his sophomore year, averaging 4.8 points and hasn't played in the NBA since. So yeah, the Nets either hit on their first round picks or just didn't really have any. So I'm going to go with Musa here as their worst first round pick since 2010. All right, for the Boston Celtics, it's going to be Gershon Yabusule, who was the 16th overall pick in the 2016 draft. I honestly completely forgot about him until I was making this video. So he was drafted as a 22-year-old coming out of France. He played 33 games as a rookie, like I said, at 22 years old, averaging 2.4 points in seven minutes a night. And in his sophomore year, he appeared in 41 games, averaging six minutes a night, and he scored a whopping 2.3 points. It was not a great pick at all from the Boston Celtics in that 2016 draft, with Yabusule going 16 overall. A couple guys after him were Malik Beasley, Karis LeVert, Pascal Siakam, and DeJounte Murray. And Boston has been a good drafting team. And I decided to go with Yabusule over Romeo Langford just because Romeo Langford played a little bit longer in the NBA. Oh, uh, the Philadelphia 76ers. Where do I even want to begin with them? So they had multiple top five picks that really didn't work out for them. They had Evan Turner from the 2010 draft. They took him second overall. But Turner at least carved out a 10-year career in the NBA. We all thought Jaweel Okafor was going to be the next great big in the NBA. He was selected third overall by the Sixers in 2015. He flamed out. You also could talk about Markel Fultz, who they traded up for in the 2017 draft. Obviously, the injuries really derailed his time in Philadelphia. But who I'm going to go with is somebody that never played much in the NBA. He played 13 total games that the Sixers traded out of the 10th overall pick in the 2018 draft. They said, we don't want Mikel Bridges. We want Zaire Smith out of Texas Tech. Yeah, so I decided to go with Zaire Smith for this one. He appeared in six games in his rookie season in 2019. In 18 minutes, he shot 41% from the field, 37% from three, averaged 6.7 points, and then played seven games in his sophomore year in 2020, averaging 1.1 points, shot 27% from the field. And yeah, you could also have went with Mark Markel Fultz, who was the number one overall pick. Like, they traded up to get him, but they did trade him to Orlando two years after they drafted him, and that pick that they got in that trade ended up being Tyrese Massey. So, you know what? I was like, I'm going to go with Zaire Smith, who they took 16th overall and only played 13 games for them. For the Toronto Raptors, we are going with the 20th overall pick in the 2014 draft, the man that was always two years away from being two years away, and we are going with Bruno Caboclo out of Brazil. Yeah, everybody thought Caboclo was going to be that next great pseudo forward that could handle the rock, that could maybe eventually develop a jump shot and that can handle the offense in the half court set at 6-9 people thought he can guard multiple positions play over the floor well yeah he ended up playing four years in Toronto averaging 1.1 points 0.6 rebounds and 0.2 assists in 25 games. The men rarely played for the Toronto Raptors. You always heard about this guy that he's just two years away from being two years away, that he's going to be really good one day and he's going to be the next Giannis Antetokounmpo or somebody like that. And it just never worked out for Koboko in the NBA, not for Toronto, not for Sacramento, not for Memphis, not for Houston. And he hasn't been in the NBA since 2021. The Dallas Mavericks didn't have too many first round picks either since 2010, but somebody they took ninth overall did not work out in the 2017 draft 
left was Dennis Smith Jr. Dennis Smith Jr. definitely had his flaws coming out of North Carolina State. The one thing was going to be his jumper. He never really developed much of a three-point shot in the NBA. He ended up playing just a year and a half in Dallas, 101 games before getting traded to the New York Knicks in the Kristaps Porzingis deal during the 2019 trade deadline. Smith has been bouncing around the NBA since, spent a couple years in New York, then played a year in Detroit, a year in Portland, a year in Charlotte, now is currently playing for the Brooklyn Nets. And he's still a solid defender in this league, but what Dallas did in 2017, taking him ninth overall, didn't work out with his time with the Mavericks when guys like Donovan Mitchell, Bam Adebayo, and John Collins went a couple picks after him. Oh, from Memphis. We were so close to being able to talk about Hashim Thabit, who went second overall in the 2009 draft. But obviously, that does not fit the criteria of this video since we're going from 2010. So we're going to be talking about Zaire Williams, the most recent guy mentioned here, and the first 2021 draft pick. Yeah, trading up from 17 to 10 and selecting Zaire Williams out of Stanford just has not looked like a great pick whatsoever for Memphis. And I know he still has a little bit of his career left ahead of him, and they've drafted guys like Wade Baldwin, Jarrell Martin, and Jordan Adams. But those were all pretty late first round picks and I don't think Zaire Williams is ever going to live up to the hype as the number 10th overall pick or at least not in Memphis which is basically the criteria of this video. We have another recent first round pick here and that's the New Orleans Pelicans selecting Kyra Lewis 13th overall in the 2020 draft. Lewis played three and a half years in New Orleans before getting traded this year in the Pascal Siakam deal then was also included in the Kelly Olynyk Toronto Raptors trade as well. In the three and a half years that Lewis played in New Orleans he averaged 5.4 points, 1.8 assists, 1.3 rebounds, and shot 39% from the field and 30% from three. I'll admit though, I really like Kyra Lewis a ton coming out of Alabama. I thought he was for sure a lottery pick in that draft, and he just never really worked out whatsoever. The defense was never there, and there was too many offensive inconsistencies, and he got injured a ton. For the San Antonio Spurs, it is crazy, man, because they are known to be such a great drafting team. I mean, trading for Kawhi Leonard in the 2011 draft, hitting on guys like Derek White and DeJounte Murray super late in the first rounds of their respective drafts, and Keldon Johnson as well, who was super late in the 2019 draft, getting Devin Vassell in the lottery in 2020. But what they did in 2021 still never made sense to me. They selected Joshua Primo 12th overall. Now, this wouldn't have looked as bad if they traded down in the draft and selected Primo, where a lot of people thought he may not even have been a first round pick. And they decided to take him in the lottery 12th overall. The man played in 54 games for the Spurs in basically a year and some change, averaging 5.9 points, 1.8 assists, 2.3 rebounds, shooting 37% from the field, 30% from three. And oh yeah, engaged in inappropriate and offensive behavior by exposing himself to the team's private psychologist. Yeah, this pick was an absolute mess for such a respective franchise. It never made sense when it happened, still doesn't make sense today. So for the Houston Rockets, it has to be the 16th overall pick in the 2012 NBA draft that never played a single minute for the Houston Rockets. And his name is Royce White. So yeah, Royce White was drafted back in 2012 by the Rockets and never played a single game for them ever. He was drafted on June 28, 2012, was up and down in the G League at times for the Rockets, and then in July of 2013, was traded to Philadelphia, and then immediately, and then was waived by the 76ers before the start of the 2013 season. He was up and down and then spent a brief amount of time in Sacramento in 2014, where he played the only three games of his NBA career. He took one shot at his NBA career, and he missed it. So he ended his NBA career with zero points, zero rebounds, and zero says and he was a first round pick 16th overall in 2012. One thing that I just love to do to spice up watching the NBA either it's at home or going to the game is playing fantasy sports. Today's video is sponsored by the easiest way to play fantasy sports all NBA season and that is underdog fantasy. It's my favorite place to play fantasy games. My favorite part about underdog is the pick them feature that is super easy to play. You pick two to five stats of your favorite players or either a game you plan on watching or following and choose if they can go higher or lower. It could be in personal fouls. It could be in points. It could be in triple doubles. I recently hit a four picks for $100 on Christmas Day where I got Josh Hart to get higher than seven points, Damian Lower to get higher than 25 and a half points, Jalen Brunson higher than four and a half free throws made. And then another thing that I love that Underdog does is promos at times, which you can combine in a pick and play. And this was one point equals you win for Giannis Antetokounmpo. All I needed him to get was over a half a point. 
and they'll do plenty of those throughout the season as well. And if you get all your picks right, you can make up to 20 times your money on a single NBA game. You can also do rivals picks as well, which pits two players against each other. And that could be in your typical points, rebounds, and assists as well. So yeah, what are you waiting for? Sign up at Underdog Fantasy today at underdogfantasy.com or the App Store and use my promo code SROS Ross to get a 100% deposit match up to $100. You also receive a new customer special or aka a mystery pick, which will get you a pick'em special in your lobby when you sign up using code SROS that you can see on your screen now. You also must be a certain age in your state to play Underdog Fantasy. Every state that's legal to play Underdog will be in the description below. And please, like always, remember to play responsibly. So yeah, use code SROS at sign up to get a 100% deposit match up to $100. And thank you again to Underdog for sponsoring today's video. All right, so we're going to go to South Beach to Miami Heat for the next pick. And we're going to go with the 24th overall pick in the 2014 NBA draft. The player that LeBron James really wanted to play with, even though he just ended up leaving for Cleveland a couple weeks later. We're going to talk about them selecting Shabazz Napier out of UConn. The Napier was definitely undersized coming into the NBA, just at six foot tall. Obviously, he was coming off a national championship with the Huskies, was one of the best college point guards of all time, came in as a 23-year-old for the Miami Heat, played 19 minutes in his rookie year, shot 38% from the field, 36% from three, and averaged 5.1 points and two and a half assists, was up and down in the G League in his rookie season, and then was traded to the Orlando Magic the following year for a future second round pick. You could also talk about Precious Achua as well from the 2020 draft, just because Tyrese Maxey was the pick right after him. Oh, the Charlotte Hornets, man, they are right up there as one of the worst drafting teams since 2010. Just so many bad draft picks. You could talk about Cody Zeller, fourth overall in 2013, Noah Vonley, ninth overall in 2014, Frank Kaminsky, ninth overall in 2015, taking Malik Monk over Donovan Mitchell in 2017, but we're going to go all the way back to 2012, and we're going to talk about Michael Kidd-Gilchrist, who they took second overall. Now, Michael Kidd-Gilchrist ended up playing seven years, basically, for the Charlotte Hornets, so at least shout out to him for that, but the fact that he went second overall and averaged eight points, five and a half rebounds, shot 47% from the field and 28% from three, just didn't really work out for him in Charlotte, as much as the hype had him to be, and one of the worst-looking jumpers in the league, and what just makes this look a little bit worse is Bradley Beal was picked number three, and Damian Lillard was picked number six. And they were also coming off one of the worst NBA seasons of all time, going 7-59 and with a 10% winning percentage and ended up not even getting the first overall pick to select Anthony Davis, just to add insult to injury. For the Orlando Magic, we are going to be going to the 2015 draft and we are going to talk about the number five overall pick from that class. Mario Hazonia. So Hazonia played three years in Orlando in 219 games in around 18 minutes a night. He averaged 6.9 points, 2.8 rebounds, 1.3 assists, shot 41% from the field, 33% from three, and was just not a great defensive player whatsoever. He was so disappointing that the Magic didn't even pick up the fourth year of his rookie option and has not played in the NBA since 2020. All right, we're going all the way back for the Washington Wizards here to the 2011 NBA draft. The pick in between Bradley Beal from 2012 and John Wall from 2010, they took Jan Vesely, sixth overall in the 2011 NBA draft. Vesely played in 141 games for the Wizards in two and a half seasons, averaging 3.5 points, 3.4 rebounds, didn't take a single three-point shot, shot 52% from the field, and was part of a three-team trade in 2014, getting traded to the Denver Nuggets, where he played in 21 games for them and has not played in the NBA since 2014. I was going back and forth on who I wanted to go with the Atlanta Hawks. I'm actually going to talk about Cam Reddish, who they took 10th overall in the 2019 draft. Reddish didn't really work out whatsoever for the Atlanta Hawks, played in 118 games before getting traded to the New York Knicks two and a half years later for Kevin Knox and a first round pick. They ended up using that first round pick to get DeJounte Murray later on. So it worked out somewhat for them. But Cam Reddish averaged around 11 points, three and a half rebounds, but shot 38% from the field in Atlanta and 32% from three. We also thought that he had such high defensive potential, but he really didn't show it all that well in his time in the Peach State. Okay, so for the LA Lakers, I did have some issues trying to figure out who this could be. They either didn't really have many first round picks because of trades or they hit on their draft picks. I could talk about Jalen Hood Shafi who was just in this most recent 2023 NBA draft, but I think that's a little unfair to him. I mean, they had some solid picks like Larry Nance late in the first round. They've taken Joyce Randall in the top 10. They got Brandon Ingram, Bo Wagner late in the first round, Kyle Kuzma, Josh Hart. Like the Lakers have definitely hit on some draft picks. So I'm going to talk about Lonzo Ball, who went second overall in the 2017 draft, 
one pick ahead of Jason Tatum. So Lonzo played just two years in LA, 99 games. He averaged 10 points, six and a half assists, and six rebounds. He shot 38% from the field, 31% from three, and 43% from the free throw line. He definitely had all the potential in the world still. He was still headlined in that Anthony Davis trade in the 2019 offseason, but he just did not work out whatsoever for the Lakers. And obviously, he really developed his game a little bit more in New Orleans, and obviously in the brief stint in Chicago before getting a major knee injury. And we haven't seen him since 2023. I hope we could see Lonzo back on the floor, fully healthy once again in his career. This pick that the Clippers made in 2018 kind of reminds me of the Joshua Primo pick, and they selected Jerome Robinson, 13th overall in the 2018 draft. So they did a great job trading 12 for 11 to the Charlotte Hornets, and they took Shea at number 11, but I don't know why they took Jerome Robinson potentially over Michael Porter Jr., 13th overall. Robinson was not really projected to go in the first round, let alone in the lottery. He ended up playing in 75 games for the Clippers, averaging 3.1 points, 1.3 rebounds, 0.9 assists, and shot 36% from the field, 29% from three, and 60% from the line. He was then traded to the Washington Wizards in a three-team deal in 2020. We actually saw him play a little bit for the Golden State Warriors this season, where in 10 games in three and a half minutes, he has shot 18% from the field and 16% from three. All right, I'm between two for the Sacramento Kings, who have also just had so many bad draft picks since 2010. You could talk about Nick Stauskas. You could talk about Ben McElmore. I'm not going to talk about Thomas Robinson, but he's somebody I definitely thought of just because he was taken fifth overall in the 2012 draft, one pick ahead of Damian Willard, and he played in 51 games for the Kings before getting traded in his rookie season. That's how bad he was for Sacramento. But now I'm going to talk about Marvin Bagley, who they took second overall in the 2018 draft, one pick ahead of Luka Doncic. We all thought that they should have taken Luka Doncic if he didn't go number one to Phoenix. They still took the big men out of Duke. He played in 148 games for Sacramento, averaging 13 and a half points, seven and a half rebounds, and shot 49% from the field. He was constantly injured, played 62 games in his rookie year, 13 games in his sophomore year, and then just 43 games. He played 30 games in year four before getting traded to the Detroit Pistons. And just the fact that they took him over a generational town in Luka Doncic has to make this their worst pick since 2010. I also went back and forth for the Phoenix Suns, who are low-key one of also the worst teams at drafting since 2010, besides the Devin Booker pick from 2015, which definitely saved them. I was going to talk about Jogan Bender, who went fourth overall in the 2016 draft and was just horrible for Phoenix, but I'm actually going to talk about Josh Jackson, who went fourth overall in the 2017 draft one pick ahead of De'Aaron Fox. Yeah, De'Aaron Fox and Devin Booker could have been Kentucky backcourt partners in the NBA and that could have been elite for years to come, but they went with Josh Jackson, the wing out of Kansas, who played in just two seasons for the Suns, did play in 156 games, so at least he stayed healthy. He averaged 12 points, four and a half rebounds, shot 41% from the field, had a horrible three-point percentage at 29% before getting traded to the Memphis Grizzlies, and he also had plenty of off-the-court issues as well. For the Golden State Warriors, even though they won a championship two years after drafting him, I got to still talk about James Wiseman, who was the second overall pick in the 2020 draft, one pick ahead of Lamella Ball, who went third to the Charlotte Hornets. Wiseman played 39 games as a rookie, averaging 11 and a half points, 5.8 rebounds, and shot 51% from the field. We saw the promise. We saw the potential. He was just 19 that year, but then he missed all of year two, all of his sophomore season with a knee injury, and then played just in 21 games for the Warriors in year three before getting traded to the Detroit Pistons at the 2023 trade deadline. And his Warriors tenure averaging 9.9 .9 points, five rebounds, and playing in 60 games in two and a half seasons. There was two guys that I wanted to talk about for the Detroit Pistons. I could have went with Sekou Dumboya, who went 15th overall in the 2019 draft. He only played in 94 games for the Pistons before being out of the NBA shortly after. But maybe that would have been a little bit better for them if this player just ended up being out of the NBA that soon. We're going to talk about Killian Hayes, who was the 7th overall pick in the 2020 draft. Yeah, Hayes has just been a detriment to this Pistons team. He has actually made them worse over the four years. He never really got better. They released him a couple weeks ago. He averaged 8 points, 5 assists shot 38% from the field and 27% from three in over 200 games for the Pistons. For the Chicago Bulls, we are going to talk about Doug McBuckets, Doug McDermott. The reason why this is also a bad pick, they took him 11th overall in the 2014 draft. They traded out of the Yusuf Nurkic and Gary Harris picks to do this. McDermott played basically two and a half years in Chicago in 161 games. He averaged eight points and two rebounds, less than an assist tonight and shot 44% from the field. Obviously, he turned his career around in Indiana, becoming one of the best three-point shooters
receivers in the league, but it did not work out taking him 11th overall in the 2014 draft. I could have went with Jabari Parker, who was the second overall pick in 2014 for the Bucs, but you know what? Injuries did derail his career, but one pick that I think was a little bit worse that still went in the top 10 was Thon Maker, who was the 10th overall pick in 2016. He was such a wild card coming into the 2016 draft, and it was definitely a shocker when Milwaukee took him at 10th overall. They definitely tried replicating the Giannis Antetokounmpo pick from the 2013 draft, and Maker played in 166 games for the Bucs across two and a half seasons, averaging four and a half points, two and a half rebounds, and shooting 43% as a seven footer. For the Indiana Pacers, it's kind of a boring one here. It's TJ Leaf, who was the 18th overall pick in the 2017 draft. The Pacers have been a good drafting team as well. So that's why it's gonna be TJ Leaf, who in three years for the Pacers averaged 3.3 points, two rebounds, and has been out of the league since 2021. And for the last pick we are gonna talk about in this video, it is one of the biggest busts in NBA history. It's for the Cleveland Cavaliers. You know who it is. And it's gonna be their number one overall pick in the 2013 draft. Anthony Bennett. It definitely would have been Deion Waiters if they didn't make this pick, but yeah, Bennett ended up playing just one year in Cleveland. He wasn't even included in the Kevin Love deal. He played 13 minutes in 52 games as a rookie in 2014, averaging 4.2 points, three rebounds, and shooting 35% from the field. He then spent a year in Minnesota, a year in Toronto, a year in Brooklyn, and has been out of the NBA since 2017. He never should have went number one overall. It was a shocker to everybody when they took him that high out of UNLV, and it's definitely the worst draft pick in this video. So you know I had to save the best for last. So yeah, that is gonna be for me. I hope you guys did enjoy this video. Let me know if you did by dropping a thumbs up, and let me know your thoughts on it in the comments below. I plan on doing a video where I'm gonna talk about every NBA team's best non-lottery draft pick since 20. 10, so make sure you subscribe so you can see that and like always all my links are in the description below twitter tiktok instagram you can also take a look at my podcast dedicated youtube channel spotify and apple podcast links there as well thank you for watching i love you guys and i'll catch you on the next one peace